closed the lights shut off and the truth trickles into the alleyway we are there that's right ladies and gentlemen welcome to studio alley where we share our honest very honest very truthful opinions on movies movies and more movies you know when the stars aren't around and we're not sucking up to them so welcome again back everybody i'm your host john you make us sound like the fog <laughs> we kind of are like we were talking yeah, to we kind of are <laughs> Yeah. Wait, the original fog or the one with Maggie with uh, Maggie Grace? Uh, the original fog. Oh. But Maggie Grace is yeah. 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 So. With Superman and Maggie Grace. Uh, Henry Campbell? No, that, the other one. Um, Dean King? No, no, the other Superman. Brandon was, Ralph. Bra- no, 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 the other one that was Superman. Not George Reeves. Christopher Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I get you. Yeah. Who was that? I did not know that. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm your host John. With me today is. Shane. Shane's with us today. Yay! Thanks to have you back, Shane. Shane joins us every once in a while. Shane will be taking the spot of Josh today because Josh is whoop whoop um, uh, turned down for what? Uh, yeah, yeah, bachelor party. Yeah, woo! Not, not for him. So he's still available, ladies. Yes, ladies, it's all for so you. So if you still want to take a bite out of that huge hamburger, You're right? Still have your shot. Uh, but uh, David is here. Yay, as always. Uh, welcome, like I said, like I say over and over again, welcome back to Studio Alley for those who are returning. Um, those new, uh, Studio Alley is our fun little entertainment podcast where we talk movies, movies, more movies, uh, reviews, news, and keep in mind we see it for us and we see it for you. Uh, it's uh, Movie News Monday, so Movie News Monday, we talk about the latest news that came out, that's t- come out, and we the kind of things that people are talking about. Or we wonder why are people talking about this, or things we think, hey, we should give this more press because we think people should be talking about this kind of stuff. But so, uh, so much is happening. How are you guys doing? How are you doing, Shane? Okay, just okay. That, yeah, that's good enough. That's good enough. Yeah. How about you, David? How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Oh, that is amazing. I love to hear that kind of stuff. So, uh, well, we're, we're taping early because we're all gonna be out of town for MegaCon. That's right. Woo, so woo. hopefully, MegaCon was great. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll get we'll, maybe we'll we'll bring that we'll up. Another, podcast yeah, we'll do a po- podcast of the joys and not joys. The highs and the, and the lows. Yeah, and po- yeah. Who? Do, you know what? Do you think? Do you think uh, comic cons now are like? Do you think they're they're really for comics nowadays? Or are they more? They're trendy. Yeah. Do you think it's just like like a cool thing to do now, or is it really like for like real fans and stuff? Is it just a cool thing to go well, to? They're not really comic conventions anymore they're they're pop culture conventions right yeah. so you'll you'll see a lot of star wars you'll see a lot of movies you'll see a lot of uh animation you'll see anime you'll see comic books it, yep. it's all over the place it's, it's really a pop culture convention and that's why they're not really called comic conventions anymore either they're just called conventions so very strange very strange to me but i go there for what comic the girls yeah and oh. shut up shane <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, it seems like a lot of it, too. We talk about this, and everybody knows how I feel about it. Um, it seems like it's really a place to show off your costumes, too, it seems like nowadays. It really that's is. That's what Saturday is for, yeah. It is. Yeah. I mean, it just seems like everybody shows up at Comic-Con, and look at the cool costume I did. Look at the cool costume. It's not really about the comics or the stuff anymore. It's mostly people hang out and show off their costumes. That's how I feel. Hang so, out? Some well, of them do kind of hang out. They shouldn't be. A lot of hanging out. Yeah. All right. And it's mostly guys, so. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that's the scary thing. Exactly. All right, so let's get right into the movie news. So much has happened this week again. Where do we start? Since we talked about comics, let's talk about comics for a minute. Dive into the comic books. All right, let's talk. Let's talk about one, a couple. We got a couple of comic book news. Um, first thing is, uh, how, we we did a review on in another studio alley. Uh, we did a review of, of Logan. We did. Um, we we all thought it was okay. It wasn't it was bad. It was it was an awful movie. It was, it was all right. Um, it okay, problem. see, I have, clearly have a different opinion. You I hate it? I thought that movie was great. and right. I don't think... I think the internet went nuts and said it's the best comic book movie of all, all time. Right. I think it's very good. Okay. And I think... Honestly, I do think it is great at times. I think I think the CG at the end gets a little sloppy and kind of crappy. You're right. Especially with the kids. It's pretty. People don't admit that, but the CG uh, looks pretty shitty at the end. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I really did. But I, I think the movie's it. 
the probably one of the best X Men movies. It's probably number two to First Class. Right. Um, the reason why I bring up Logan again though is the one who kind of stole the film was X twenty three. No, you don't think so? Well, I'm just saying that's what the internet says. The internet is going nuts. No, no, no one says this. Really? I'm hearing a lot of people say she was really good. A lot of people when when the trailers came out, everyone was like, "Wow, she's awesome!" But I was like, when you watch the movie, she's okay. And she's cool in the movie, <laughs> right? But she's not a very complex, interesting character. No, but I'm saying the little girl playing the role. I'm saying they're saying that she's actually was really good at playing the role. Okay. She's good. She's good in the movie. I don't want to see her ever again. And I know what the, where this new story. That's going. where I'm going with this because I thought she was good in it, but I'm like, I thought I had my fill. That was good enough. I, she, but there's people nothing are, else to say with that character. Right, and people are pushing to see more of her of X23. I don't think people are. I think the studio is. You think the studio is doing? Okay, so let's talk about it. But the stu- but uh, the writer, or whatever of um, of Logan, of Logan, yeah, he says he doesn't see her in any future X Men movies, something like that. So well, she can. Logan is also completely separate from every X Men movie. Right. So I don't see how they would do it anyway. But uh, I, I don't know. But would you want to? See, I mean, is, is there really any interest in a, a X twenty three movie? I mean, seriously. I mean, no. Do you really want to? Yeah. Do you really want to see more about her? Do you really yeah. want to see a movie with a bunch of eight to ten year old mutant kids? No. No, I hate kids. Yeah, I agree. Hate them. <laughs> well, what if they? What if they advance the age to like she's in her teens now? Well, then you're gonna have to recast her. Right. Then you. But then saying, you don't have the emotional connection with that character because she's a different actress. It's not going to work. Or you wait a little while. You wait a little while. Or, and she might get older, and guess what happens when a lot of kid actors get older? They become shitty actors. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, talk to Haley Joel Osment. Or they or become drug addicts, too. Both. <laughs> yeah. So. I just wanted to bring that out, because I wanted to know what your opinion was on her, because I didn't, I don't remember, I couldn't remember how... I thought she was great in the movie. You I thought just, she was good? Okay. I think she's great. I, I couldn't I remember think... what it was, like, I just wanted to know, like, did, would you want to see more of her or not? Like, I thought I had my fill over in Logan, so... Yeah, that's that's how I felt too. Okay, but moving on, I just want to bring that up real quick because I, I just I heard some rumors stuff. But okay, uh, the other one we're talking about is Marvel is is currently are they working on it or it's just an idea? I'm not sure how this is, but a Black Cat and Silver so Sable movie. Yes. Yep. You hear the crickets? Who's claiming for this? Who who really wants this? I uh, I would have liked to see Black Cat in a Spider Man movie. Yeah. I think Black Cat's pretty cool. Especially her initial uh, appearances in the comics. I thought were really interesting. I'm trying to remember who Black Cat is. She is the Catwoman oh. version. She's Catwoman in Spider-Man comics. <laughs> yeah, It's oh, pretty okay. much the same thing. Oh. Now, what's cool about Black Cat, though, is uh, she yeah she's pretty much Catwoman. And she's the wild, like, crazy side of Peter. Like, so Peter's Spider-Man... Uh, he starts hooking up with this really hot chick who's in black latex all the time. They yeah. go on adventures. They beat up bad guys like the Hobgoblin together. And eventually their relationship starts progressing. And he takes off his mask and he's like, but guess what? I'm also Peter Parker. And she's like, put your mask back on. Because she doesn't give a shit about Peter Parker. She only cares about the adventure and the excitement of Spider-Man. Yeah. And, and that's what makes her interesting. She's just in, she's she's a, an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. Like, and that's what her attraction to Spider-Man yeah. is. She doesn't give a crap about Peter Parker, and that's what makes that's what makes them split right. apart. And how would you describe Silver Sable though? Nineties, definitely the nineties. Super. But 90s. she's a princess or something, isn't she? Of uh, a country, some crappy country, yeah. Country, yeah. And she likes to do body hunter work or something. Yeah, she she's hires, got a team she and gets, like super villains together. Yeah, she's she, very Suicide Squad kind of. Yeah. Was, um, you know what I got out of this though? Here's what I got out of this whole idea of, of making a movie with these two characters. It seems like it's Marvel again saying, hey, F- hey, screw you, DC. Look what we can do. You guys want to do your Gotham Sirens? Well, we can do that too. Watch this. You know what I think this is? Because this isn't from Marvel Studios. This is from Sony. It's right, from right. Sony. It just seems like there's that influence of... Sony does the, did this last time with Amazing Spider-Man 2, right? When Amazing Spider-Man 2 was coming out, what did they announce? They announced Sinister 6. Yeah. They, want, they had plans for a Venom movie. And uh, there are plans for Amazing Spider-Man 3. No. They had a bunch of ideas being kicked around, and they all came apart because Amazing Spider-Man 2 didn't perform as well as it did. I think it's a pretty good movie. I'm in the minority. Um, but, so the next Spider-Man movie is coming out, Spider-Man Homecoming, and Sony's doing it again. They're, they're plugging the hell out of uh, maybe future franchise stuff they can do. I'm kind of intrigued by Venom. 
maybe I'm just trying to be an optimist, maybe because I like the director and I like the actor, but I'm kind of intrigued by Venom. It might be cool. Yeah, um, we talked about this in another episode. I just don't understand how they do it. I don't understand it, how they, if, Honestly, if they just do it as literally taking Venom from the comic books and like just doing a Venom story from the comics, right. and they're like, yeah, I'm out of prison, and, but I want to protect the innocent, and yeah, Spider-Man beat me up once, but they just don't show Spider-Man? Yeah. I think you could maybe do it that way. Shane, cool. would you be interested in a Venom story? By himself? Venom was the one in that really bad Spider-Man movie with that looked like Spider-Man, but he was like, blah, 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 the black costume. Remember the guy from the 70s show played him? Well, it wouldn't be him. Wait, well, no, it the original Spider-Man? The original with Tobey Maguire, yeah. I only saw the first one after that. I, was, oh. I yeah, lost interest, so, <laughs> so All probably right. not. All right. Yeah, I, like I said, you're excited about it. I don't know. But. The, only, the only other one that I, haven't, that I thought they were going to do that I wouldn't mind seeing is the... Uh, that one prince in the black outfit, the uh, oh Black Panther. Yeah, I oh, wouldn't mind that. Movie. Yeah, he's getting his movie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I hope, I hope it's Claw. Give me Claw. Yeah. And guess what he's gonna be made out of? Sound. No, no, no. living, sound. living sound. Yeah. So wait, so so if they do, are they if they got a, an idea of casting for the Black Panther or Black Cat and uh, Silver Sable movie yet? They might not? have ideas. They might be throwing ideas around. Do you think Sony, like you said, is Sony just jumping on now? He's like, just, yeah, okay, you guys, you guys got Spider Man who can break Spider Man big again. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do a Venom then. So we're gonna jump on the before this they is all down. They have. This is actually, I uh, very interestingly, uh, I rewatched um, the Amazing Spider Man one um, with commentary, and there's there's producers commentary and there's directors on it as well. And the producers said like, at our studio, every day we Spider Man came up because that was their, that was their big franchise money maker they had sitting there. And they got to figure out how to how to take advantage of this, how to strike when the iron's hot, and I think that's what they're doing. And Spider Man had a lull. Uh, Marvel fixed it with Civil War, and it seems like Spider Man Homecoming people are talking and are excited for, um, which you know it could be great. I'm really hoping it's great. Uh, but this is getting Sony trying to plug their other stuff. Hopefully, they can build a franchise out of this. I don't know. I don't know what they what you would do with this movie. Uh, I tell you what. You know, the, the only way I think a Silver Surfer movie would work is if you got rid of Black pa- Cat, no offense, but you made Silver Surfer movie, and it's Silver this, Sable. or sorry, Silver Sable movie, and she's this princess from a country that is, is an adrenaline junkie, and like, oh, you're a princess, whatever, but she puts together a team of uh, criminals, and she goes on some mission. And that would be like an adventure, adventure comedy slash... Kind of movie, and, you know, and her, and then you show how badass this yeah. chick is as leading the team. I, That'd be kind of interesting. I but... could see them do. I think that's kind of what their mentality is: is we could do a Suicide Squad kind of story, right? And have Black Cat in it because Black but Cat. Why? I don't why have why. Black Cat? Yeah, why? Because the sex appeal and the popular. She's she of these of the, of the other Spider-Man characters, the supporting cast. Black Cat's really popular. So why you, you, have... you don't think Black Cat could just have her own movie? No. What's interesting about Black Cat is her relationship with Spider Man. And Spider Man's not gonna be in it, so it's not gonna so if you throw her in I just think you're it's it's boring. to me it's gonna be like Black Cat's gonna get in the way. You have you have this somewhat interesting character look at this way. No, she's, not. she's not that interesting silver saber no. saber. But if you write her a certain way, like I said, if you write her like a certain way, she could be interesting, she could carry a whole movie with her and this team that she leads and she's a total badass. Yeah, but why not have but just, why? Why would why she not, show up? Why, why would Black Cat show? It just seems like she's a nuisance in the way. Well, like, all the all, Black Cat. What were they called? It was Silver Sable and the Wild Pack. Something like that. Yeah. They're, yeah, yeah. they're all um, super villains that were trying to go good. Right. So it would make sense if Black Cat's on that team, right? She's a thief who turns good. Okay. So then you don't need to call a Black Cat, and you still be a Silver Sable. It's movie. not called just Black Cat and Silver Sable. No, but I'm saying then it would be just a Silver Sable movie, and yeah. Black Cat happens to be on the team. Yeah, but guess what Suicide Squad's called? It's called just fucking Suicide Squad, but guess who's all over the fucking marketing campaign? It's Harley Quinn. <laughs> yeah, and Joker. That's true, yeah. And guess what? His ass isn't even in the movie that much. <laughs> so my point is, why not do that? If, I and guess, honestly, yeah. if you're, you're, with the way Spider-Man is now, it, with the introduction of Marvel, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we're not going to get Black Cat ever. Right. Not going to happen. So you don't think this movie's going to happen? No, I think this movie might happen. I'm just saying that we'll never get Black Cat, a relationship between Black Cat and Spider-Man in a movie. Right. Because Peter Parker, guess what he is again? He's a teenager. Yeah. Oh, he's going to be doing teenager stuff again. Because that's all people ever want to see Spider-Man do. You know, they don't want to see him in his 20s. They don't want to see him as a biology teacher. That's Spider-Man I like. 
That's Spider-Man I want to see. I like Spider-Man being behind on rent, arguing with his wife, and buying lotto tickets because he's just a normal dude. I like that stuff. But nobody wants to see that. Everyone wants to see Peter Parker as a teenager. And you can't have teenager Peter Parker hooking up with 25-year-old super hot crazy girl in black latex. Right. Ain't going to happen. I'd like to see that because that sounds amazing. <laughs> That's all kinds of fantasies for a 60-year-old right. guy. So if you're gonna do a black cat or a, a silver sable movie with her recruiting uh, villains turning good or turning good, that could work. You could throw a black cat in there. Uh, yeah. What other what other Spider-Man list D-list characters can you throw in that group? That'd be kind of cool because we're never that we, there's no chance of us seeing them anyway. You're not gonna see the Rocket Racer in a film, but if you throw them in the black cat silver sable movie, part of the Wild Pack, maybe you could do something cool with that character. You know, maybe you could throw in, um, what are some other characters that are dealers? The Puma. Not the Puma. Uh, uh, Tombstone. Puma. I like Tombstone. I think al- albino freaking crazy mobster, that's pretty kick-ass. Yeah. You could throw maybe the Beetle in there. Maybe you could throw in, um, Killer Shrike. Uh, is that her name? Not Killer Shrike. Uh, what was her name? The girl that shot the yellow beams that worked with Carnage. Shriek? Oh, Shriek. Shriek, yeah, is yeah. that her name? I don't know. Okay. Um, okay. I know Sandman works with her every once in a while. Uh, I like the Prowler a lot. Yeah. He's just now kind of getting a little bit more popularity. I thought the Brawler was a cool character. Yeah. Um, so, I think you could do this. People are all naysayers and negative, and I'm like, yeah, I think it's a dumb concept initially, personally, but, you know, it doesn't mean... what If, if I told you, hey, I'm going to do an X-Men movie set in the 60s where they stop the Cuban Missile Crisis, and it has none of your favorite mutants in it. Instead, it has Banshee, Darwin, um, Havoc... And that's what it doesn't that sound great? Everyone's gonna go, boo! <laughs> that movie sucks. But guess what? It was the best X Men movie. It's the closest yeah. it's been to the comic. So, mm. all right. So you're 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 giving it a shot. I think it's terrible. I to me, I think Sony is the bane of Marvel's existence. Oh yeah, they I are. think. Oh god. Oh, Sony hey, sucks you know so though? much. Venom might come out, and it might suck. Silver Sable and Black Cat might come out, and it might suck. But guess what? It won't suck as much as. Won't suck as bad as that Fantastic Four film by Fox. So, guess what? Who cares? But see, that's what kills me. Every time I argue with people who are DC fans about the movies and they try to defend the DC movies, and I go, Marvel movies are all so great, they're all so great, they always go, what about Fantastic Four? What about Sony and their Spider-Man shit? Well, then like, you say, oh, not God, part of those studios. Different studio. It doesn't matter. They, it doesn't matter. They just bring up the fact that they're okay, Marvel movies. Okay, you know what you say after that? You say... What about fucking Steel? How about that? How about that time when Richard <laughs> Pryor fought Superman? <laughs> Shut up. All right. Sorry. Right. Speaking of Justice League. Ah, uh, yes. All right. Let's get into this, David. There's news from the... Uh, happened in the middle Justice of League. last week. Yeah. yeah. So, David, explain us what, what happened. Okay. So, uh, I am going to be as, as um, um, respectful as I can about this topic. Uh, because it is, it's real tragic news. But I am also going to give my honest opinion of what I think actually happened in this situation. Okay. Uh, back, uh, so uh, I think it was like Wednesday, uh, or maybe maybe it was even earlier, um, uh, Zack Snyder, uh, uh, director of such films as the Dawn of the Dead remake, 300, uh, Man of Steel, Watchmen, and um, Sucker Punch, who also directed um, Batman vs. Superman, who is also directing, uh, who completed principal photography for uh, the Justice League movie mm-hmm. that's coming out in November, uh, he announced that he is stepping down as director. He's not going to work on the post-production of the film. Uh, he's, he said he needed time. And the reason he said he needed time, his same thing with his wife. His wife is his executive producer, uh, Deborah Snyder. They both stepped away from the project because they're, uh, I don't know if it's his oldest daughter, but his daughter who's 20 committed suicide Which real real wow. tragic real tra- she's really young she was um actually really involved in community service and it, it really is uh tragic news and uh it just goes to show you a little side uh, life lesson here you never know what's going on in somebody else's home you know? yeah yeah there's a guy who's directing tons of movies making a ton of m- money and trust me, we've, we've made plenty of cracks with Zack snyder right we both thought batman versus superman was terrible right and it is still terrible but he's still making a fortune you know what yeah, i mean still, honestly, you know, like i'm I, Hey man, like Batman vs Superman was terrible, but Zack Snyder gave me Watchmen, and I really, really like Watchmen. A lot. So you never know what's going yeah. on in somebody else's backyard. You know, you think everything's great or whatever, but yeah. and I think Sucker Punch is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But it's an admirable failure, failure, and I respect that failure. 
don't really respect Batman for Superman that much, but the Sucker Punch, I do respect that failure. Um, but uh, in his absence, someone uh, is taking over post-production as, uh, as acting director. So he'll be handling reshoots. Uh, he'll oversee a lot of the production, uh, the post-production process, uh, you know, the animation for the CG, right. maybe the tone of the film. Um, I'm assuming the score is probably already completed, unless it's not, and maybe he's going to oversee this too. But the person that's taking charge now is Joss Whedon. Who's Joss Whedon, John? Uh, Joss Whedon is famous for creating so many lovable character TV shows, character-driven shows and films, mostly more commonly known for stuff like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, Dollhouse. Oh, it just didn't do so good, but yeah. it's got Elijah Dushku in it, so it, it came from Yeah. yeah so. Um, he also did Avengers. Yes, and Avengers 2 Age of Ultron. Yeah, if you want to bring that one up, yeah. <laughs> that one's okay. It's right. very okay. Um, but he is now taking over. He switched sides. He was on Marvel. He had a falling out with Kevin Feige after Avengers Age of Ultron. They kind of meddled with him, he said. And he wasn't very happy with that film, and he left. Um, and he signed on to do write and direct a Bat- Batgirl movie. And but it sounds like he's been working on the Justice League post production. So do you think there's a bunch of lies here, or what are you saying? Okay, so I started doing some research on this because I felt like this feels a little fishy. Do your <laughs> diligence, okay? So uh, I, th- this this is the amount of uh, research I did. I googled uh, uh, Zack Snyder's daughter is Autumn Autumn Snyder. She committed suicide uh, March twenty. Right. What, what's today? Today's May, so it's in May. It's, it's in May. I wondered the same thing. I thought, wow, it's taking him this long for him to say, wow, I need to deal with my problems with my wife, or my daughter? Uh, it seems kind of so, weird. So, yeah, it's, I think what happened is she uh, she passed away. And it is a lot of stress. It's a lot of pressure on the family. And it is it is an honest tragedy. Nobody should bury their child. Um, But I think Zack Snyder was working, and I feel like, the pressure the studio got on him, and you know, family troubles as well. I feel like, and keep in mind, in a little bit before then, uh, Joss Whedon signed on for Batgirl around that time. So I think what happened is they have been having problems with Zack Snyder. This tragedy happened. Zack Snyder isn't as focused on the project as he as they initially wanted, and I think they kind of asked him, "Hey." Uh, we brought Joss Whedon in, who's already directed and made billions of dollars for Marvel. Right. And everyone keeps saying that, that we need somebody like Joss Whedon to focus our the our the course of our universe. Do you, maybe maybe you should step down and we'll put him in. Because it sounds like he's been working behind the scenes for a while now. And this is some shit. I think. I I think the reason the reason they're, they they use they talked about his daughter's passing is it shows that the studio isn't going through turmoil right now. Which, because DC isn't going through turmoil at all. I mean, like, what director's working on The Flash right now? Oh, wait, nobody. Oh, well, at least The Flash has a good script right now. Oh, no, wait, they went to a page one rewrite. Like, everything's falling apart right now. And Wonder Woman's coming out, so they don't want... They don't want to make it look like they're they just lost their big director for their biggest film ever that's coming out in a few months. I think I think they they kind of capitalized on this this tragedy as a smokescreen. Right. Maybe maybe that's my cynicism towards the studio. I think that's what happened. <laughs> maybe not entirely, but I think yeah, I think they kind of just did. They just were like, well. Yeah, let's yeah let's make a move here, because now's the time. I just am I, I crazy? Do I sound like a crazy person? No, I mean no. I, I it makes a lot of sense. Really, sadly, it makes a lot of sense. Not to belittle the situation, but it does make a lot of sense. And it's I'm just, not thinking that like Zack Snyder was like, oh well, I want to keep working even though my daughter passed away. Like, no, I don't think it's that. It's I think he did want to step down, but I think they were like, oh well, he's stepping down because his daughter passed away. I think really. I think there's a lot of pressure he had on from the studio as well, and it's just like that's just too much. And he, it sounded like things weren't just going his way at all anyway. And I don't think the studio was too happy with him and the numbers with Batman vs Superman, and the 
the critical reaction of Batman vs. Superman. I mean, Suicide Squad made more money than that movie, and that movie was garbage, and that was with D-list characters, not Batman and Superman, so... Yeah, uh, so here's the thing. A lot of people complain and will say, though, that Josh Whedon's a good writer. He comes up with good ideas and stuff like that. But, um, you know, then they, a lot of people complain, though, that Avengers really isn't that good. Avengers isn't really that good. Avengers 2 isn't really that good. Avengers so, 1 and 2, they're, they're fun, they're light, they're breezy, they're, you know, they're a good time. Uh, really, not to be mean, but rewatch the Avengers with a technical eye. Right. And then watch Winter Soldier with a technical eye. Meaning, watch shots, watch fight choreography, watch, like, there, there's, if you watch the commentary for Civil War, there's this, they go on a, the, the directors go on a really long tangent, not a tangent, but a really long explanation on why they shot from a lower angle on why Captain America and Black Widow are talking at the funeral of Peggy Carter. They talk at length about that. Do you think those shots were talked at all in the Avengers? Like, like you look at those shots, they're really, really basic and really kind of sloppy and really poorly lit. Everything feels well too pretty and too light, and it it just there's a reason why Civil War is really good and the Avengers is is a fun time, but when you revisit it, it doesn't yeah. really hold up. Shay, did you like Avengers? Avengers two? Yeah. Like they were them. decent. Decent, yeah. That's, that's the thing. I enjoyed them. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm not hating them. I enjoy oh, them. Yeah, like you said, they're very, very fun. But I see what you're saying. Yeah, technically, they're just they're pretty basic movies. They really are. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, do you think Whedon can really save the Justice League? Okay. I mean, it's in tr- it's been in trouble since day one. You know, what I mean, as far as expectations. It's, it's, it, and a lot of people want to put a lot of people put it on Zack Snyder. It's not all Zack Snyder's fault. Zack Snyder's job was he had to introduce Superman to a new audience. Right. And a lot of people really liked Man of Steel. I hated Man of Steel because it's yeah. not Superman. It's yeah. just it's a guy who's dressed like Superman, and he there's characters that are named similar to the characters in Superman, but it's not Superman at all. Um, but a lot of people really did like it, and it brought people into Superman. I'm like, okay, cool. Batman vs. Superman is really bad. It's really terrible. But I feel like they crammed that on him. They're like, hey, I want to do a Man of Steel 2 sequel or whatever. Maybe I can fix what I did wrong in the first one. They're like, yeah, let's fucking put Batman in it. Okay, well, I'll put Batman in it. Okay, well, make sure Wonder Woman is in it, too, because we got to set up her movie. All right, I'll put Wonder Woman in it. Like, now, she doesn't really fit in here at all, and she kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. But, okay, I'll put her in. All right, well, make sure you also put in the Flash, Aquaman, and Cyborg in here, too. All right, and set up Mother Boxes and yes. Dark Side, and and Lex Luthor's in here for some reason, but he's not gonna be Lex Luthor. Like it, it just it's like what are you guys doing? Yeah. I feel like a lot of this was the studio's fault, and Zack Snyder is trying to catch up. Yeah, I I don't know. He's got a lot of work ahead of him. That's all I'm saying. And it's also Joss Whedon coming in for post production. This is pickup shots. Yeah, doing rewrites. This is a lot of the technical stuff. I don't think Joss Whedon's a technical guy. He's a script writer at first. Like. Initially, he's a screenwriter. I mean, he did Toy Story. He wrote the script for Toy Story. Yeah. Like, it's, so... like he's a he's a screenwriter, and I, I feel like like he's one of those screenwriters. Like the reason I'm directing is because I don't want anybody to fuck with my script, and I feel like that's what he does. And kind of like Kevin Smith, as Kevin Smith writes, like I don't want anybody to mess up my fucking script because yeah. I just want I just want to write dialogue. And not saying that Joss Whedon isn't better than Kevin Smith. Oh, he's better than Kevin Smith. Trust me. I'm just saying a writer director comparisons. Yeah, it's if you want if you want the power, you have got to be a director. But I don't think he really is a strong director. I think he's just maybe a stronger writer. Right. I don't know if this is going to do much. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what a difference it'll make really. I really don't. So um anything else you want to add into that uh, just like uh <laughs> you sure about that? All right. Can he change the villain from Steppenwolf to uh, I don't know Judas Priest? I don't know what other rock. Uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna keep going here because we're talking about the horror of Justice League. I want to talk about another horror film. Ooh. Uh, does anybody remember a little horror film called Event Horizon? I yeah. remember Event Horizon. Yes. 
What do you remember most about Red Horizon? I remember seeing that in theaters and being horrified and never wanting to revisit that film again because it freaked me right the fuck out. <laughs> Shane, what do you remember about Red Horizon? Definitely very creepy. Uh, yeah. Um, it was one of the few movies that yeah freaked me the hell out. And the reason why is because I don't like the idea of hell and being tortured and ripped apart in hell was, forever. I, just, I think uh, the... Uh, we, we talked about this when we talked about horror films. I think the best horror movies aren't when you have a, ba- a, a, a main character that's like, hey, I'm going to do some marijuana and then I'm going to go walk out into the woods and then get killed. Because you're like, you got, you're stupid. Also, and they're, they always make them like bad people. Like, I'm cheating on my girlfriend. Now I'm going to go out in the woods and then get killed. Like, well, you're a dick. Yeah. It's more terrifying if it's a person that you like they're a good person, and then they go out in the woods, and what happens? Something terrible happens to them. That sticks with you. Yep. There's a reason why Green Room sticks with me. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Because it's a bunch of good people yep. stuck in a shitty situation, and things go real bad real fast. Yep. And Event Horizon is the same way. It's a good a, a good group of people, and things go real bad, and terrible, horrific stuff happens to them. Yes. And also the the visuals of it is really messed up. Yeah. Especially the, the surveillance footage of the old crew and ugh. Yeah, it's funny you mention that. Um there's always there's been talk for a long time, and fans of Event Horizon have heard of, of a lot of deleted scenes, which got even more gruesome. Oh Jesus. Um wow. unfortunately the I'm trying to find it now. Uh Paul Anderson, yep. uh, who he, went on to do a bunch of bad movies. Right. He currently says, though, that all the deleted scenes are missing. Like, completely like mis- some, misplaced somehow. You, you know mean I mean like the uh, original Star Wars Yeah, footage? somehow, yeah. Somehow they, they're, all, they're all missing for some reason. Um, do, you think, do you think they're in hell? Th- that's very possible. Uh, just for example, a couple of quotes by him was, uh, Anders explains, uh, there was a lot more that was shot that isn't in the, mo- the movie, but you'll see the mess, you'll never see the messed up version because we made event before the kind, the kind of DVD revolution. You know, DVD ushered in an era where you had to have additional footage, deleted scenes, things like that. There was no call for that back when we were just doing VHS cassettes and laser discs. So the material just wasn't achieved very well. And since the movie became a big cult classic, Paramount has asked us to come back in and do different versions, and we looked for the material, and it just doesn't exist. But oh. if they have Laserdisc, Laserdisc right. laser where the... Laserdisc gave us commentary and behind-the-scenes features. Yeah. So he's kind of full of crap, but... That's so, uh, I don't know. Would you want to see... I mean, if they could find it, would you want to see um, deleted scenes? Um, I'd be okay. interested to see what would it you, is. Would you like to know what some of the... Deleted scenes are from what you, you know, can recall. You know what would have gotten me though? What's that? Came in a really nice steel book. Oh yeah, yeah. I buy yeah. it. I don't know if I ever watch it, but I buy it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right? it it sit on my shelf. In the yeah. package. Yep. I maybe add it to my voodoo, and that'd be that'd be it. Yeah. And then Shane can watch it and tell me if it's any good. Yeah. Shane, you might really enjoy some of this stuff here because some of the deleted scenes um, included more exposition about the ship. Uh, more backstory about Cooper and Justin, okay. more about the relationship between characters, blah, 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 who cares about that, uh, explanation, more explanation about the gateway, blah, 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 a scene in which Weir hallucinates that Justin turns into his wife, creepy, but okay. But the most notable cut scene, though, um, I'm getting this from, uh, I'm, I will throw the source out, from Dark Horizons, who talked to the actual Wes Anderson. Uh, the most notable cut scene, though, is a scene which remains only in fragments in the film, as they watch the video logs of the uh, crew going mad and what has been dubbed the bloody orgy scene. Uh, apparently, there's even more graphic scenes in that one, they, <laughs> when, uh, which includes a combination of real-life amputees, accident victims, porn actors, and a ton of special effects makeup that was used to render gruesome scenes of mutilation far more graphic than the already extreme stuff seen in the film. Okay, so, that's not necessary. <laughs> right. So I don't know if anybody remembers it. I hope that's but just the menu screen. That, that, literally, <laughs> that, literally, that was probably one of the best scenes in the movie to me is, I, I, if you can re- remember it, when he finally, when the, the guy's working on that and he goes, hey, I was, I'm able to pull up the camera sequence, the cameras of what recorded. So they all hunt around the screen. They show these quick flashes of what they're seeing on the screen and you can literally see people getting, males getting raped by demons. 
uh, horrible scenes coming out, right? And the best, and what's great about the scene is after the scene ends, the camera goes black, and Lawrence Fishburne, who's the captain, turns his crew and says, "Pack up your shit, we're getting out of here." <laughs> so, yes, that's exactly how you would act. Yep. You wouldn't do like in these other horror movies and be like, hey. "Well, let's stick around and see what we get." No, he if, says, "Let's get the fuck out of here." You know what? If they had a white captain, he'd be like, well, let's try to find out what happened. No. <laughs> Those were right. like, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> right, right. So I love that scene in the movie and because it was very realistic to me. Now, I don't know. You'd have to Google it. But I think you can see certain, some of the deleted scenes. I don't know oh. how on screen. Like, the, you don't see the actual scene, but there's pictures. Like, So yeah. the scenes are missing. But shots and stuff. And there are shots of, and, and maybe maybe I'm looking at maybe I'm correct. Somebody let me know. Send me an email or whatever. But I believe I saw a picture of like Sam Neill's character getting raped, which was the doctor who loses no, his eyes and becomes uh, no, that, that's Is that just, in uh, the film? No, that's uh, that's Jurassic Park three. <laughs> 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 but yeah, there's I've seen a, a a graphic picture of him screaming and he's getting raped by a demon or something. So so all I can say is this movie would be ten. I think I would go crazy watching this movie now because it messed me up so bad the first time. Well, and watching I, I more graphic like scene, I'm like, saw, oh. it saw any more of that scene. It would maybe take away it. You think it would take more away from it? You know, it's that 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 glimpse of like, oh my god, that is miserable. Yeah, right. So if you see too much, then it takes away the the shock of it, and you know. Yeah, exactly. There's a balance. There's a, you know, <laughs> there's a balance. Yep. Uh, okay, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, just keep an eye out. Maybe someday they'll find it. Maybe not, and maybe they'll release it. I don't know. Do you own Blood Red Horizon now? Does anybody own it? No. no. Um, I've seen it. I, I was tempted to buy it. Um, I saw it on Blu-ray for really cheap, and I was con- contemplating buying it. And then I realized, like, uh, I, if I'm going to watch this, I'm probably going to end up watching it by myself. I don't want to watch it by myself. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Nah. Just um, like a Conjuring type thing. Yeah. You don't yeah. want to watch that by yourself. Uh, I watched The Conjuring 2 by myself. Guess what, sir? Watch that shit in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, but I heard part two wasn't as good. Part two is pretty good. It's pretty good. Really? It, uh, Conjuring 1 is, is, is it's a classic. It's, yeah. it's, it's a masterpiece of, of classic horror. Uh, I have not seen part two yet, no. Car- I saw Conjuring the first two. Oh, you yet. saw the first one. I saw okay. the first one. It gets a little too sloppy, I think. Not not like uh, with the, the the special effects or anything, but it just gets a little like like you understand like the rules of ghosts and stuff like that in the first one. In this one, there's like toys come to life and like it's cool looking, but I'm like, mm, yeah. Can do that I, is too? this the same movie with the uh, with the now nun? they're talking about the nun that now yeah. they want to do a movie just with the nun now? They're All saying. The hand, Spoiler for that movie a little bit. The nun turns out to be a demon, and I'm just like, but it's a nun. You know, I feel like a lot of the director went like, like they were, he was looking at designs and, and like they had the script ready, and he was just like, that nun design is sweet. Let's just put it in there. That crooked man design, fucking sweet. Throw <laughs> that in there. Doesn't really make sense, but it's fucking cool, and kind of creepy. I like it. That's what they did. It's good though. It's pretty good. Um. Tell me about this nun. Did she walk around like a ruler? Smacked her hands? Yeah. <laughs> you have to do a couple of Hail Marys, too, after. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, no, I said Hail Marys, or she'll come after us. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I, I don't know if I uh, would watch it. Um, that's all I can say. I, I, the movie freaked me out. It was one of the few movies that freaked me out. Yeah. So, Could you, if, if you had a copy of it, and I'd give you 50 bucks... And you have to, you have to turn a camera on to keep it honest or whatever. And you could only watch it in a hotel room at two a.m. in the morning by yourself. Would you do it? Fifty bucks and a one night at a hotel. Which <sighs> Event Horizon? Yeah, I could. I, I could do it too. Uh, I, it would mess me. It would scare the crap well, out of me. You would not sleep that night, though. I would sleep no, but I, I would do it. I mean, okay. I'm not saying I couldn't watch it again. I probably would. But it would be very disturbing. I mean, it would be very disturbing to watch it. Hey, man, I shut off uh, the right before the credits in Sinister. I was like, fuck this. And I, was <laughs> really? like, I was like, this movie's really creepy, and it's, it's disturbing, and I know there's going to be that one final scare at the end, and I'm like, I don't need to sit through this. I'm a grown-ass man. I can shut it off. <laughs> no one's here. It's cool. Quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to add about Grand Horizon? Scary shit. Yeah. Um, as you know... Uh, in closing for this episode, um, 
as you know, we lost uh, Roger Moore. Roger Moore passed away. Roger Moore passed away. He did several James Bond films. How did you feel about Roger Moore as James Bond? Did you like him? Or do you think he was too goofy? His movie's too goofy? He was my second favorite of the Bonds. Yeah? Who was your first one? Uh, Sean Connery. Everyone loves Sean Connery. Yeah, Sean yeah. Connery's pretty cool. I'm a little confused how the order goes, though, because Sean Connery's character always plays like he's older, like he's going to retire almost, yeah. seems like, so long. It's almost yeah. like they're going backwards. Like, if you watch Sean Connery, then you watch... It almost looks like they're going oh, backwards. Because uh, now you watch the newer ones, say, and it's like... I was going to say, the newer ones were he's the too first stories. And it's, he's right. the first agent. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's really weird. No, it's don't... Like, you can't... Even, even, even in the new, new series, it doesn't make any goddamn sense. Right. James Bond has no... Chronological order whatsoever. So you can't think like that, huh? You just gotta watch him like. Yeah, yeah there's it's gibberish. Cause yeah. every five movies he fights Spectre and he's like, "What is this organization called, Spectre?" I'm like, "You fought it like seven movies ago, man. You took it down. It's back <laughs> at what? Like it happens all the time." So it's you just gotta watch gibberish. it like missions. You just, just basically gotta, just like, each yeah. one is its own separate. Because the way yeah. keep in mind the way this worked was this they released a movie one every five years or whatever. Some people would see it, some people wouldn't. So. You can't build like a. It's not Marvel, the Marvel universe where you have to build a chronological continuity. People just saw it every once in a while. And your dad would drag you to see a James Bond movie and be like, right. "What's going on? Who cares? Whatever." He's James yeah. Bond banging some European chick. There's a giant laser pointed at something. He's got to stop it. All right, cool. Um, Roger Moore didn't really care for his movies. Really, you didn't like Roger Moore's movies, huh? No, mm, really. Uh, I don't That's think I liked any of them, honestly. No? But keep in mind, I didn't really watch a whole lot of his. He didn't like Moonraker? Is that the one where they go to outer space? Yeah. <laughs> what was... He... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying. I just wanted to throw that out there. We lost Roger Moore. Uh, oh, I, honestly, I don't think he's a bad James Bond. I think right. he, he brought a lot of the, the class and sophistication to it. Um, he also brought the puns. He was also Sorry. just in a lot of really bad ones. Yeah. Kind of like Pierce Brosnan. I like Pierce Brosnan as James Bond. He just was in a lot of bad ones. Yeah. Except for Pierce Brosnan, you couldn't uh, drive a manual transmission. It's tricky. So they had to uh, rate the cars that he was driving. To Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Really? He, didn't, he couldn't drive manual transmission, so the cars oh. he drove had to be... Uh, so it's like, hey, you could be a spy. Exactly. <laughs> That's what they're saying. Yeah. So. Hey, you're born in England. All right. But uh, we also lost another person that a lot of people might not know about. Yeah. Um, I do, because she comes from a movie that I'm really absolutely nuts about. Oh, yeah. uh, we lost, and I apologize ahead of time if I don't say her name right, Lisa Spooner? I want to say Spooner. Uh, a lot of people are probably like, who the heck is that? Uh, Lisa Spooner played Caitlin Bree in Clerks. Yes. Uh one of my all-time favorite wow. movies of all time. I can still watch Clerks and still I, laugh. I heard she's uh, marrying an Asian drum major. She was, yes. <laughs> she, she eats <laughs> Chinese. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, she played Caitlin Bree in Clerks. Caitlin Bree was the uh, the ex-girlfriend that Dante was still pining over. Yeah. For a long time. Um, was, uh, da- and kind of a symbol of who Dante was. He was a person who couldn't yeah. pass his adolescence. Right. And then she had a very tragic, shocking... Uh, finale to her character at the end of the film. If you yep. if you knew if you see Clerks, you, you know exactly what we're talking about. If you haven't seen Clerks, you totally need to see it. Um, but uh, f- sadly, she died at the age of forty four, battling an undisclosed degenerative disease. Um, I it's pretty sad, really. That's pretty young. Oh, well, that's really young. It's really yeah. young. You know what I mean? Um, so I just wanted to mention that um, because I love Clerks. Um, it, it it kind of inspired me, to, and she to, gives probably one of the stronger performances in the film. She really does, yeah. and and it's it she kind of shows up late, you know. Yeah. In the she film feels movie. feels like a real person in that film. Yeah, she really does. So, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Um, tragic, very tragic. Uh, Caitlin Spooner. Mm, yeah, there were so many great lines in Clerks and stuff, and thirty seven. Yeah. <laughs> So, there's so many great lines. Well, I didn't just fuck myself. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. So, uh, anything else you guys want to bring up? Uh, Yes. What's that? Uh, Jim Henson, sir. Oh, crap. I totally forgot about Jim Henson. I'm totally sorry. Shane, I apologize to you because you're a big Jim Henson fan. Jim Henson passed away. (laughs) Jim Henson passed away. Yeah, surprise. The end. Now, uh... Netflix released a trailer for apparently a a miniseries 
or a... Is it a miniseries or is it a regular or series? Or a series, I, I don't really know if it's a series or it's going to be a, a movie, but a sequel to Jim Henson's cult classic Dark Crystal. Which it took him long enough to make yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it may uh, not be relevant Not anymore. much is shown. You don't see the plot or the uh, stuff like that, but you see a lot of the concept art for it. Yeah. And the concept you do art see really cool, uh, one of the puppets at the end, which is really which, cool again. It looks like the classic. Yep. Yeah, I gotta be honest. Okay, um, let's talk about this for a second. Now you mentioned about this. Here we go. Um, Time to get booed and stuff thrown at him. I don't really remember the Dark Crystal that much, so I don't think it made that much of an impact on me. So. Well, that's where it was the cult classic. Either you really liked it, or you don't remember it. Yeah. So does that mean I didn't like it? I guess because I don't really remember. I just remember the two people you're supposed to be watching, cheering for. They were like halflings or something, or. They look like elves. Yeah, right. And I didn't like the way they looked, so it kind of threw me off right away. I was like, eh, they look goofy to me. So I couldn't get it. It's one of those, I don't really remember it very much, but then again, I remember it when I first saw it. I'm like, this is very creepy. This was kind of freaked me out as a kid. Yeah, right. You know what this reminds me of, John? What's that? This might piss you off a little bit. Kind of reminds me of Guillermo del Toro back in the day. Yeah. Where yeah. it had really, really cool designs. I just don't remember a goddamn thing about the movie. I don't know the plot. <laughs> like Pan's there. Labyrinth? Yeah. yeah. Well, Pan's Labyrinth, I think, is actually a masterpiece. Yeah. Right. Um, but more of like uh, Guillermo del Toro's... Uh, Hellboy 2? Hellboy 2, yeah. Yeah. Or like, like Hellboy mean, 2, I don't really... mean Pan's Labyrinth 2. Yeah. yeah, Pan, thank you, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> I will say 2. I will say Pan's Labyrinth 2. It's like, you want to make a sequel? They said no, so he said, well, fuck it, I'm going to do it in Hellboy yeah. 2. I'm the bad. design of Hellboy 2 is amazing. It's just that I don't really remember much of that movie, and that's okay. I don't really have to revisit it. Yeah. Um... I do remember uh, Labyrinth. Yeah, I remember Labyrinth. Uh, Jim Henson's Labyrinth with David Bowie. Amazing movie. I, I've lost track of how many times I've seen that movie. You like Labyrinth that much? Really? Yeah. I, I, like, literally... I don't remember that much. I remember most well, I remember of it. it. Oh, I, I've seen it at no, least. No, you remember two parts of it. That's all you no, remember. No, no, no. <laughs> trust me. As a guy who's dated um, weird quirky girls mm -hmm. with a tendency to be geeky, I had to sit through that shit a lot. Oh, and then kidding. being an art student, had yeah. to shit, sit through that shit even more. Yeah. I do not like Labyrinth. I do not. I don't think. Oh. It's I'm sorry. Oh, I'm really? so sorry. I, I don't, don't remember enough to say I liked or didn't oh, like it. I, I remember I more like, part of it, but I don't I remember don't like the music. Music was okay. Uh, you didn't like Bowie's junk all moving around? Yeah, Bowie's sack bouncing <laughs> in my face. You didn't like uh, Babe with the Power? No. <laughs> what power? The power of voodoo. Who do? <laughs> you remind me of the baby. <laughs> like, smack, that, smack that baby, make a pee. Like, what the fuck? Um, that movie, and literally, what is the message of the movie? It is, hey, maybe you shouldn't let goblins eat your little brother. <laughs> Everybody should know this. But okay, but here's my point exactly. Look, look how we started talking about the Dark Crystal we moved to the labyrinth. Does anybody really, really love... Dark Crystal that much? I'm I mean, in there, John. My point is, I don't like Labyrinth, so it's very difficult for me to revisit Dark Crystal. <laughs> I think I'll probably like Dark Crystal a lot more, actually. Like, if I revisit it now, I'm like, I could probably appreciate the art design. Right. Like, like a Ralph Bakshi movie. Like, remember those Ralph Bakshi movies in the 80s? Like, his animation's really cool, but his movies suck. I feel like that's what's going to happen. It's like, I'm going to revisit Dark Crystal and go like, man, this looks cool. And then I'll just carry go on about my day. Um, I, I just, I really don't like Labyrinth. And most people have Labyrinth on DVD, and on the other side of that DVD is Dark Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> and most people pop into uh, Labyrinth because it's, you know, it's got Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. You know, there's live action people in that one, and it's a little bit more to connect with. Yeah. And it's but, Jennifer Connelly, man. But this goes back to Shane. Jennifer Connelly. Shane, let me ask you, because me and David debate this all the time. And this goes back yeah. to my argument about those. I, the pro one of the problems is. You don't like puppets. No, I love pu the Muppets. No, no, no. I don't think the gener t the gen younger generation today even has any interest in the Muppets at all. I don't think they care no. anything about any of the Muppets or any of the puppet stuff at all. I, I really don't. That's Unless they're on Sesame Street and it's little, little kids, little tiny kids learning the ABCs. I, I don't think this well, generation I was gonna really say the, the only ones that I could really see uh, puppets or whatever would be the original Star Wars. Yeah. Because they use Okay, yeah, but stuff. I mean, yeah. But I'm but talking I mean, like the yeah. Jim Henson... You know, Kermit the Frog and yeah. all that. I, thought, no. I just I don't think, think I think Elmo 
attracted a lot of teenage boys after uh, Katy Perry wore that one T-shirt on SNL. <laughs> so yeah, okay, go ahead. I think you're wrong, to be honest. <laughs> no, I think I, I think kids like puppets still. Like you, it's you got to do it right. The problem is the Muppets. What are the Muppets trying to play towards? They don't know. Their their last TV show on NBC was playing towards adults. And it's really hard for a grown ass person to be like, I gotta get home before eight o'clock to watch the Muppets. Yeah. Well, oh yeah, but that's who grew up with the Muppets. Exactly. That's the thing. Adults. But it's it's my my complaint towards comic books today is how do you get a comic book today? You gotta go to the comic book store. And what's at the comic book store? Thirty to forty year old men. Just that's it. That's it. You don't see you don't you see occasionally the twenty year old hipster, but. Well, because they kids? can't afford it. They can't afford it. <laughs> right. And right. you can't take a kid to a comic book store. Now there's, there's boobs everywhere in a comic book store. So There is? A lot of times there's a lot of boobs. Like cosplay boobs and... and oh, okay. You know. I was going to say, I don't go that often. You so. go to any more comic book store, Shane. You get <laughs> more boobs. But you talk to most people who, when they were kids who got a comic book, they were at a toy store, they were at a grocery store, a newsstand. That's how you get people into it. Yeah, the reason why the Muppets work or only work on nostalgia for people from the 80s and early 90s. And the problem is you got to keep adding more to this. you got to keep adding younger generations to keep watching this stuff like that. Yeah. They're not attracting any new people. They're just running on the nostalgia of people in their 40s and their 30s. Well, that's why and they that's need, not replenishing it. Then they need to bring back the thing, the shows like uh, Muppet Babies. Yeah. Get the new generation again. Do you really yeah. re- put Muppet Babies on uh, the original series on on Netflix? People will watch it. Um, and honestly, Dark Crystal uh, with this, put that shit up like they're doing. They're putting it on Netflix. Do you okay? It'll, get a, it'll draw new viewers. And come on, man, the new the freaking twenty year olds who are into cosplay and costume design and stuff like that. All the weird quirky chicks, you know, the girls who have lunch boxes for purses. They'll watch the shit out of it. You really think this is going to do good on Netflix? No, this will do great on Netflix. Really? You think so? It's quir- it, if it's, it's quirky enough that it I may. almost feel like... I mean, you might be right. I, maybe cause I'm an old man now, so... I mean, Honestly, what... I'm what, an old man, but I, I just feel like people are going to start watching and be like, ah, it's puppets. No. It's a cool idea, this whole fantasy thing. Why don't they just get actors? It's like watching The Hobbit. Like, why don't they just get real actors to do it? Why do we have to watch puppets do it? It just seems like that's the attitude that'll well, be that, added. That's maybe why they're releasing it on Netflix, just as yeah. a test to see and, how well it does. And honestly, and... Let, let's face it. If you put this on maybe TV, or where you have to TiVo it, or if you put like a movie into theaters, people aren't going to check this out because people aren't risky with that kind of stuff because it's money. It costs right. time. You know, you got to program your DVR, or you got to spend the ten bucks to get to the theater. It's on Netflix. You're willing to try more stuff. I bet because because of Netflix, you tried Voltron. You would have tried Voltron if it was on regular television, That's or if it was, true. or if Voltron got a movie. Would you have checked out Voltron in theaters? No, your ass wouldn't have. You would check it out on Netflix, and that's how they get. That's how they get you. Well, in fairness. I only checked out Voltron. I had no interest in it, but I only checked it out because I was writing reviews for the website for the time, and I thought I better do it. I just felt like I had to. So shut up, shut otherwise, up. I wouldn't watch Voltron. Don't, 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 don't negate my. Uh, my <laughs> but that's my point. All right. Is. Well. Also, uh, Mystery Science Theater, puppets, and it apparently has another cult following. Robots. Right now. Robot puppets. Made out well, of puppets. Okay, yeah. Right. Servo. Uh, yeah, and Gypsy. Tom Servo, stand by, and crew. <laughs> yeah, but isn't that one? Isn't on Mystery Science Theater? It's supposed to be funny. You're not supposed to take it serious. But with like the Dark Crystal and Muppets, you're supposed to take that kind of serious. You're you know, supposed like, to take Kermit serious and Bobby Bear. Not serious, serious. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like you're supposed to Gonzo. think of them like, yeah, this is you know, with with the Mystery Science Theater, you're supposed to be like, this is the puppets are dumb looking. The puppets and some. Yeah, but the Muppets are supposed to be comedy, so you could do comedy. The Muppets should be on Netflix, is what they should, I'm saying. Well, that's what they need to put it on. I just didn't hear a lot of people wanting to see that last Muppet movie. That's all I'm saying. You know, we argued about this before. You said it did pretty good. The I, first one wasn't all that great, though. That's, and then the that's second the one. The problem like, is, keep in mind, the Muppets, the Muppet movie with Jason Segel came out, and people were excited. And fuck you, man. I remember this because I wanted to go see the Muppet movie, and everybody else was like, eh, it doesn't look very good. And then I was like, oh, you guys all suck. And then all you sons of bitches saw the Muppet movie, 
And I was the first person who did not see it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, are you serious? I was like, are you serious now? Who the only reason I wanted to watch the second one was because see your face. You want a Russian accent. That's the only reason. I was like, told, yeah. actually, the, the last Muppet movie is more akin to what the Muppet movies were. Really? So yeah. The last one, or the, the you know, the last big one, um, with Jason Segel and Amy Adams yeah. and stuff like that, and Walter, the Muppet nobody gives two fucks about. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, I went to see a Muppet movie and I just hang out with these assholes. And, and as, as much as I think that movie's pretty okay, it's not great. So it also lost a lot of diehard Muppet fans. So, yeah. like, why would I show up for their second movie when I have to just hang around with well, Jason Segel, Amy Adams, and fucking Walter again? And they're not even oh, in the second one, are they? They're not. Walter right. is, but it's that's the thing. It's like you already you already hurt your initial fan base yeah. trying to bring yeah. in new people, but they didn't really bring in that many new people because really, how many little kids are like, oh, Jason Segel? Well, yeah. that was the problem, too, is there were three new characters. Yeah. You didn't have just the core original characters doing exactly. their thing. Yeah. And Walter wasn't a very interesting Muppet. He wasn't a cute animal or anything. He was just a, he was just he a, was generic, a person. He was a generic orange puppet that you'd see in the background of the Muppet. You know what I think they ought to do? I, my, just my opinion. I think if you're going to do more stuff with the Muppets, they keep creating new characters. There's billions of Muppets they've created over the years. I would just start keep making new stories with the ones you have. Make make Almost think of it like... The Mickey Mouse cartoons, right? Right. You've got Mickey Mouse, but then you've got Donald. You've got, you know, yeah. And every other cart, every cartoon has got one of them on another adventure. You know, yeah. and something happens. So to go back and have the Muppets, the, the core Muppets again, and have Kermit the Frog be the main guy. But then, oh, and poor Scooter, he's got, he's on an adventure. You know, something happens. And the next, ep- you do another episode or another show or whatever. And oh no, this time not Miss Piggy's got a whole adventure. You know, I'm like, okay. Remember how in Muppet Baby, Scooter had a sister, a twin sister? Yeah. yeah. And then there isn't a Muppet version of her. No. I thought there was in the originals. No. I don't think so, no. No, they just made her, made her up for Muppet Baby. Yeah. So, did she die in her adolescence? Think about that. Uh, I believe Scooter ate her. Scooter ate her. Yeah, he absorbed he, her. No, he, animal. I animal. Animal. Yeah. Or maybe she was everywhere the whole time. Maybe Scooter was going through some things at yeah. the time. And they just all played with him. Or Nanny. Ske- yeah. And Nanny took her. Yeah. Yeah. She did have those witch socks. Yep. So. But I like what you're thinking, though. It could be. could be like Scooter saying, me and Skeeter are going to do this. And they look at Scooter and there's nobody there. And they go, okay, you and Skeeter go do that. And they're just like, what What a nut, though. What a nutbag. <laughs> Scooter's off his ribbon again. Yeah. Right. Uh, I don't know. Imaginary friend, except yeah. for a sister. Yeah, exactly. So, eventually, right. it probably turned into sleepaway camp. Either that, or uh, Beaker and Bunsen could have done something with her. Yeah, that's I true. Had that idea too. Yeah, probably strapped a bomb to her body. Oh no, Beaker! I think we set on fire. Me, 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 me! Oh! <laughs> Skeeter, drink the acid. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Anything else, guys? From for the movie news Monday? Anything else? Anything new? Nothing. Nothing else. No. Bad? All right, David. How can people get in contact with us to share what their their opinions on on anything we've talked about today? Well, the best way to contact us is uh, just right here on the YouTube. All of our episodes are being slowly transferred from SoundCloud to YouTube, so you could always contact us just by scrolling down and just hitting the comment section right there, saying, "John's wrong. Muppets are awesome. I'm only six years old." Yes, that's right. Said no, said the Dark the, Crystal will be so cool. Said Yay. no six-year-old. <laughs> and hey, why are you on your computer without your parents around anyway? <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> oh, man. You yeah. should not be on the internet, especially the YouTubes. You exactly. Know, oh, yeah. You might, exactly. you might get pulled into, I don't know, PewDiePie, and then you're going to end up hating Jews. Oh, hey, hey, man. I got a fight with a guy on Twitter about that. Did you see that? Yeah. This guy attacked me because I said... PewDiePie was an idiot. Oh, he's not an idiot. You're an idiot. Like, oh, hey, geez, nothing I'm was better when I, I tweeted, um, which I said, uh, I don't really think there's that huge, that big of a s- excitement for a Fantastic Beast and where to find them. And I got attacked on, on Twitter like, hey, man, that's going to be great. That's going to be a great movie. It's going to be really good at build world building in the Harry Potter universe. I was like, all right, yeah, I'm just saying it just didn't look very interesting to me. And that movie came out, and everyone's all like, yeah, Harry Potter's back. Nobody talks about it anymore. Just kind of, <laughs> just kind of fizzled out. Yeah, fizzled right on. Um, but you can also contact us uh, personally uh, via Twitter. Ooh, the Twitter. Yes, I am Blackie Pueblo. 
I'm Knight G6. I'm at Exploited Heat. And I am Josh, and I'm at Hewlett Hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was my Josh impression. Pretty, I Feel free that. to send us a, a message on Twitter or any of these places. Um, we're also on Facebook. Yeah, uh, and, um, because this is Josh's part, that's not here. Yeah, Josh is here. Here we are! Our Facebook is Story Mechanics Podcast! <laughs> He's Mickey oh, Mouse. Oh, boy! <laughs> this is Podcast! <laughs> Alright, sure. Um, oh, yeah, and uh, you can always uh, just uh, send us an electronic mail on uh, Gmail Ooh. at Story Mechanics Podcast at gmail.com. And-